The Apogee Duet 2 is still an amazing sound card, but they are notorious for their screen just eventually dying out. So let's look at replacing the screen on the Apogee Duet 2. Two, yes, I have two to do, so let's go. All right, so I've got my Apogee Duets and replacement screens, and I'm gonna be following along with Brad's Guitar Garage, who actually gave me the initial idea as I saw his video and commented because uh, I was wondering where he actually got the screens from because they can be pretty difficult to find. And he did give me some info. Now, apparently that information wasn't correct, but it did actually get me on to getting the screens eventually from the distributor. So uh, let's follow along. Uh, that, that, get them down inside. Knob. All right, so he suggests with using a couple of spoons, but... I'm gonna try some picks because I don't really want to look at destroying the knob. So let's see if we can get it out with a couple of picks. Well, that popped up much easier than what I thought. Let's see if we can find the right size here. And bang, we got it. All right, so we got our nut off. And it's got a, a company sticker there. All right, so apparently the back rear is where oh. the screws, I believe, are. Positions on the other side. Number one, Phillips. All right, so let's see if we've got the right size here. So we got those off. And the back comes off. Not connected to anything internally. So the back just lifts up. Not connected, as you said. But it holds the circuit board in place. So, when you remove the circuit board, do it gently. You've still got a jack. The headphone jack there passing through, so you've got to remove that. But there's also a little mini cable holding on. Careful not to damage that. So on the front casing side. All right, so how is this coming out here? All right. There's a little beige catch. You get your fingernail under it and it lifts up by about, say, a millimeter. All right, I could not see that at all, but. All right, so you've got to kind of pinch it from the sides by the looks of it. And then you can just pull it straight out. All right, now let's take all these screws off. Good thing that it's all the same driver for it. As you lift this out, make sure the screen's not sticking to it. And there's our screen assembly. Make sure the screen is not sticking to it when mine clearly is. Let's pull the screen off. So I'm not sure how well you can see it here, but you can kind of see right there how it's really burnt out. Now the screen and the uh, little daughter board it's got there, they lift out. There's no adhesive on the screen or anything. Now there's a little sort of black flap at the back of that connector. The black flap. Finger nail up under it. All right, let's try our trusty guitar pick again. I guess that's not hard enough. I feel like that's up. All right, out, screen is out. So it went down this way. So let's replicate that. Let's slide this bad boy in. Hopefully that should be enough. So 
so that black bit is down. That Next. Plastic on the tracks there. Feed it in. Green there is a, a protective piece there. Peel that off. Let's peel that off. Hopefully not touch it again. And there it's got let me place a new screen in there. Align its extents with the uh, little molding guides there. And I want to pop up with a new cable because it hasn't been. All right, so it's actually really easy to put in because there are little, literally little, like you're saying, kind of molding guides. So there's pretty much nowhere else for it to go, which is actually super handy. All right, so let's put our main part back in now. So which way do we go? Headphone jack this way. All right, so now the tricky part, I think, is trying to get this ribbon cable back in. Let's chuck the back on. Before I screw this back in, let's see if it's actually working. And there we have it. Uh, mute buttons are still working. Definitely glitching out a bit though. Right, so maybe if we screw it back in, because maybe the other piece on the back of the screen isn't aligning properly. So maybe that needs to be nice and tight. All right, let's see if this makes any kind of difference. Maybe if we tighten this back up as well. Definitely glitchy, glitchy. Let's see if it makes a diff difference plugging into the MacBook Pro. So it looks like it has. Okay, so it looks like I definitely have not aligned the screen properly. It seems like it's sitting too far up. I can see more on an angle. All right, let's so let's take it apart and see if we can line that up a little bit better. So I definitely did not line up the screen. That is for sure. another try I'll try with the MacBook again because it seems to be freaking out I'm plugging into a Mac mini an Intel Mac mini I don't know if that has any issues but well that was a bit weird so this sound card still works perfectly fine it's just the screen had gone on it let me bring up control 2 so now if we turn this thing so we're on channel one, one for one. You can check out over here. Channel one over to the left, one for one. When I turn, rotate this. 75, 75, we go to like channel two, same deal. Works flawlessly. Now if we go to the output, So the main output, and it kind of picked off where it left off. So that works fine. And then finally, the headphones are on 15. And it can change that, and it reflects. 
So mute, unmute. Mute, unmute. I've always hated these touch buttons because it's like you gotta, you gotta basically look to find and get right on. I wish there were some physical buttons, but anyway. Again, it's still a great product. Still sounds amazing. When it works, it works great. It kind of sucks that they've lost a lot of support for Mac OS itself, like when you used to actually change settings on here, at least for the volume, I'm pretty sure, like it would change the volume like on the Mac and show you a little pop-up. It doesn't have that anymore, but at least it still works. So, and they're a great little unit still in 2023. All in all, this is a pretty simple repair. It uh, seems like it's harder than what it actually is, but the most difficult thing was really just getting the ribbon cable back in. But, um, other than that, it's actually really quite simple. So that'll do it for this one. I've got another Apogee screen to repair. So I'm gonna do that off camera. So see ya.